What's happening, Boot Junkies? Mike Dog Audio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And we're going to do a mic comparison uh, with a little bit different uh, flavor of microphone than we've done in the past. This one, we're going to be comparing a uh, inexpensive shotgun to an inexpensive super cardioid microphone. So we're comparing the Zoom SGH6 shotgun capsule that attaches directly to a Zoom portable recorder like the Zoom H5, the Zoom uh, H6, and uh, a number of the other ones. Uh, I've got it attached to my Zoom H5. Now, I'm going to compare it to the Samson CO2 Super Cardioid Pencil Condenser Mic. Now, this is typically sold as a pair. You get two of them uh, in the case. I'm only going to use one since this is for a voiceover and we're comparing it to a mono shotgun. But I'm going to just switch back and forth the way I've done in other videos uh, just to get a sense of if, if these work. You'll also know that I have a pop filter happening in front of these microphones. What I have discovered uh, in testing these microphones is they are very sensitive to plosives. Um, the, uh, the shotgun comes with a comes with a dead cat um, but I didn't have that in front of me when we record the video and the Samsons come with this little itty bitty like thimble sized um, pop filter that in my testing it does nothing it is so thin it's like maybe a quarter inch a half inch thick but the air goes right through it I have found this to be extremely ineffective um, for the uh, capsule uh, for preventing plosives and so I've got a pop filter I know it hides my beautiful face but it's the price we got to pay for good audio now my impetus for making this video is I do a fair bit of traveling and I always like to have a microphone set up with me when I travel so that I can do auditions and, and so forth and typically I bring my Sennheiser the MKH416 that lives over here let's unplug that this microphone and this goes with me in my bag now the past two times I've been through security this microphone in the suitcase has set off TSA which I can understand I mean look at it if you don't know what it is this metal rod in uh, full of electronics and so forth being in your suitcase I can see why that would uh, confuse the TSA folks they don't know what that is and I don't begrudge TSA for doing their job they have a job to do and that's what they're paid to do and if it's suspicious if they don't know what it is yeah take a look at it but it means that I have strangers touching my microphone they're putting their hands on it they're rubbing that explosive chemical stuff detector stuff on it and it's just risky it's risky that it could break and you know it's an expensive microphone and I don't always want to bring it with me if I can avoid it so I've been trying to find an alternative and my initial gut reaction was to try the SGH6 shotgun capsule and that way I've just got this perfectly encapsulated unit of the the zoom recorder which I bring and the shotgun capsule to see if that would work for on uh, creating auditions that way I've just got the one thing I just need to bring this rig and um, in this case it's a tripod I just use a selfie stick with it because the zoom has a tripod adapter on it which is pretty cool but as I listen to the shotgun capsule and we'll go back and forth with it as I listen to the shotgun capsule in my headphones it seems to have a fair bit of self noise so I'm gonna be quiet for just a second so you can listen to the shotgun capsules self noise and now I'm going to boost it so that you can hear it so there's just a there's just an underlying hiss with this microphone that when I use the preamp when I use the same XY capsule I don't hear that same hiss it's something inherent in the shotgun capsule so hearing that that prompted me to look for other opportunities other other microphones that might work and the Samson co2 pencil condensers super cardioid came to my attention and so I bought that stereo pair I, I haven't had it very long so we're going to compare and contrast how the Samson sounds now the Samson is not a shotgun pattern but it's a super cardioid pattern and you know from 
if you've watched any of my other my previous videos, the super cardioid patterns, I tend to like the super cardioid, especially when I'm not in my booth, uh, because the lobe of sensitivity is very narrow and it tends to reject noise from the side. So it will reject more of the uh, ambient reverb in the room. It will uh, uh, it, it will reject noise from my computer if that's nearby. It's just a little it makes it a little bit easier to control. Uh, so let's take a listen now. In my headphones, I also hear some self noise from the Samson. So let's listen to that microphone self noise now too. So both microphones have it. I'm going to make a little bit. Well, let me just make it a little bit louder here. So both microphones, and it could be a function of their price point, but both microphones do have an underlying hiss to them. It sounds like a distant ocean. Uh, you know, for the Samson, it's a technically a $50 microphone. I might expect that. I'm surprised at how much I hear of it on the Zoom, considering it's about a hundred. I think these are both about $130. Uh, so the, uh, and I'll put the Amazon prices around here, maybe, maybe in a box right here. So there'll be a box for the, uh, for the Samson, uh, for the Samson and for the, um, the Zoom, the Zoom's microphone. I'll show you the prices, but I think this, these are both about the same price, about $130 is the, is the strike price for both of these. Now for the Samson, as I mentioned before, it is a pair, but you can't buy it individually. So it's a kind of apples to apples. The thing I'm looking for is one ease of use when I'm traveling. I want them to be inexpensive. I need this mic to be inexpensive. I'm not going to go buy an $800 one because the whole point of this is when I travel, I need something that's good enough to audition that can make me sound good, but I don't cry like a baby if it gets lost, stolen, or broken when I'm on the road, like I would cry like a baby if my 416 would get stolen or lost or broken. So what I've noticed as I listened to both of these microphones is they both do sound different from each other, don't they? So as I switch back and forth, I find that they sound different. I'm not sure that either one of them is great for my voice. Um, I, I do feel like the uh, the Zoom microphone, um, for me, has a higher noise floor, I think. Uh, but it also is, um, I think, a little less flattering for my voice. Uh, and we're going to test proximity effect here in just a second, because that's a place where it might help my voice. Uh, but I do find that the, the shotgun mic, I don't love the way it sounds for me. I think it's made more for field recording and not necessarily as a great voiceover mic. Now, the pencil condenser, the Samson, I, I've seen other people where they use it for like videography, where they're actually using them on a boom to try and get dialogue. So in some respects, this microphone is designed to capture vocals. Interestingly, in the, in the owner's manual, sorry, the owner's manual right over here under a piece under something, the owner's manual, um, it does talk about using the proximity effect. So it's got a whole section right here about guidelines for the microphone's use. And it does have a whole section on proximity effect, encouraging you to get close to the microphone to leverage the additional bass that you'll get as you get closer. So let's do a proximity, uh, proximity effect test to see if it benefits either mic benefits my voice uh, in that case. So we'll start with the Zoom, uh, the shotgun microphone. I still have to be really careful with this. I have found that I can pop these mics super easily. So I, even, with the, uh, even with the pop filter in place, it doesn't capture everything. But as I get closer to the microphone, uh, I do find that the shotgun, from what I hear in my headphones, and we'll hear it back, maybe, uh, maybe it will contradict me, but it doesn't sound like the shotgun microphone has a huge impact on proximity effect. 
in my in my headphones, I don't feel like I sound a whole lot deeper, uh, but it's it's hard to tell. We'll check after. Now the the Samson specifically says to get closer to leverage the proximity effect. So I'm standing about one inch off the microphone, and I can definitely hear that it's bassier. Um, I do also get the feeling that I'm popping this microphone, that even the air is getting through the pop filter, so I still have to be very, very careful about how it sounds. It, it's it's tough to use. You might even need to get uh, an aftermarket foam plosives or maybe you know, get another dead cat type thing to try and avoid those plosives. But as I get there in in nice and close to try and leverage the proximity effect on both of these microphones, they do require quite a bit of mic technique to try and avoid those plosives. And I still don't feel like I'm being entirely successful in it. In my headphones, it sounds like we're still getting wind coming through uh, and we're still getting plosives. Very, very sensitive in both cases. But I'm not sure which one of these sounds better for me. I'm not sure which one of them sounds better. Neither one of them sound great, uh, but I do think that they have their I do think they have their their uses. I think if you were to do a a a podcast type situation, an interview podcast where you wanted to have a couple of non obtrusive mics uh, aimed at a couple of different voices, I think the Samson. I do think it's good enough for doing interviews. I think it could help in a in a less than perfect room uh, where you you don't have a lot of time to set up a acoustic uh, paneling or anything like that. And, but you also have it like set up on a desk where people right aren't right up on that mic. So for dialogue, I think that this Samson CO2 setup could actually work fairly well from that. I'm not sure it's great for voiceover. The other option for it is if you are doing uh, gaming or something like that and you don't want to have a great big condenser mic sitting in front of you, I do think that this sounds as good as any of the other budget condensers that we've that I've tested on this channel, the Yeti or the Snowball or any of the uh, the Accio, the, the, the Chinese manufactured ones. Uh, I, I do feel like this is definitely in the ballpark of those and you get two of them so it's a little bit higher in price than well it's a lot higher in price than some of the really inexpensive ones but i do feel like it it has uh it certainly is competitive in that realm but it's also nice because it's so much smaller it's not in your way uh, with respect to trying to have a keyboard or a mouse or anything in front of you where some of those big condenser mics part of the challenge of them is they get in the way of your copy your monitor whatever it is that's in front of you so it's something to be aware of so judge the way it sounds tell me if you think you like the way it sounds i'm definitely interested in hearing your opinion on these because i don't have a really good strong opinion on either one of them i feel like the samson is warmer a little bit less trebly a little bit more mid-rangey whereas i feel like the shotgun has a lot of highs does not have as much bass response and you tell me, I'm going to post these without um, any noise treatment, of course. Uh, and so you can hear and you can tell me if you think they're too loud. I think it is treatable with uh, some noise reduction, but I don't love using that effect. Certainly not when I'm uh, on the road. I might use it if I had to for an audition, just so that my audio quality isn't distracting. Uh, but I do try and go without but this is this space is about as quiet a space as I can make it. So any noise that you're hearing, any underlying hiss, is in the microphone itself. Same preamps for both, so that part we can eliminate. So there you have it. This is the SGH6 shotgun mic capsule from Zoom. This is the Samson CO2 stereo mic condenser, pencil condenser uh, stereo pair. I hope this helps. If you're a videographer and you're looking for if you're looking for location sound, these are some good inexpensive options. And I'd be curious to hear what if that's in your experience, what your experience with them is, and if you like the way this sounds. Um, and if there's any other tests that I can do with these that you'd like to hear, let me know. I'm not like a location specialist. It's not what I know how to do, but I'm certainly happy to to try some additional tests if you want to leave some uh, suggestions for me in the comments. Oh. I always have to remember. So, so that's it. That that's that's all I have for you today. I hope this helps. I hope you uh, enjoy listening to these microphones, and I, and I hope this helps make a decision if you're looking for this kind of microphone. Um, I've got some more on the way. 
Um, but I have to admit, they are, it's getting expensive to buy to buy all these microphones for the reviews. So I've set up a, a Patreon. If you want to help me buy some more of these inexpensive microphones so I can test and do these side-by-side comparisons for you, a little support on the Patreon would go a long way. Feel no obligation. It's just to help me pay for these microphones because I'm buying them. And I have my microphones really that I'm using for voiceover. I, I, I'm not really in the in the market for a lot of new microphones, but I do like doing these and I do find that they're very helpful for people and I get a good response for them. So I'd like to keep doing them for you. Um, so I have a Patreon and there, there'll be a link in the description for the Patreon. That's it. That's all I have for you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell if you want to get notified whenever I upload something new. Now go find yourself a couple of non-obtrusive mics and get out there and record something amazing.